my God, hello. This feels like my bar mitzvah. Thank you. Growing up, I was very dyslexic. I actually had to go to a special school for people with learning disabilities. I don't mean to brag, but I was the hottest girl at the learning disabled school. <laughs> like every day I got all these love notes, it was great. I couldn't read any of them, but it was nice. At the learning disabled school, you know, I was the hottest girl. I was the hottest girl. I wasn't the sluttiest. Okay, sluttiest girl at the school, her name was Taya, and she was cross-eyed. <laughs> and she would always come in bragging, being like, I just had a threesome. I was like, no, bitch, you're seeing double. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, listen, we had, like, normal things. I had a boyfriend at the school. I had a boyfriend. Frank was, like, you know, this, like, real Italian kid, you know, from New York. Ah, you know? <laughs> Always wore like a North Face jacket in the summer. Ah. We had no idea what Frank's disability was. No idea. I think just from Staten Island, I think. That's what it was. But I'm telling you, like, everyone at this school had something. Okay, like, even the principal, first day I met him, he comes up to me. He's all, like, wide-eyed. He's like, are you Tory Biscuit? Are you Tory Biscuit? I was like, yeah. He said, oh, well, oh my God. Well, welcome to Churchill School and Center. And then he walked away. And then two seconds later, he came back. He's like, wait, are, are you Tory Piskin? Like, even at the age of 10, I knew this guy didn't have a disability. I was like, this is just a Coke problem, you know? <laughs> and my mom said the same thing when she met him. She goes, oh yeah, I knew that guy. I knew that guy was a big druggie, big druggie. I'm like, how do you know? She goes, I could just tell. I'm like, how? And then she says very factually, doesn't tailor his pants. <laughs> but this principal, I'm telling you, he was so weird. Like, first day he tells all the students, he's like, you know, I actually used to be a student here. <laughs> and now I'm a teacher, I'm a principal. That's crazy, right? Life is a full circle, isn't it? <laughs> okay. So you're saying we come to school to be students, we leave and then we come back to be teachers. This is a weird pyramid scheme here, you know? <laughs> Listen, it wasn't like all bad. I was in the school play. I was in the play Annie. <laughs> Makes sense, right? Um, okay, here's the thing. I did so bad in the audition. I got orphan number eight. <laughs> eight. Do you know how bad you have to do to not get a role that you look exactly alike? Like, do you know who got Annie? Lily Chang, that's who got Annie. <laughs> but I'm telling you, the school though, you know, it was all about like building up our confidence, right? And we would always have a lot of like motivational speakers come to the school. And at the end of the year, the big speaker was James Gandolfini from The Sopranos. <gasps> so James Gandolfini gets up on stage, okay, in a room full of like 200 students. And he's like, uh, you know, I was like you, I was like you. I had dyslexia, I tried, I tried. I went to college, I went to Rutgers, okay? But I was failing. But then once I found acting, I realized, eh, you don't really need school. <laughs> and we all just went, yes! And he looked up like he shot the wrong person in The Sopranos and went, oh, shit! <laughs> I went home, oh my God, I couldn't wait to tell my mom. I, you know, like, oh my God, mom, this guy at my school says you don't even like need school. But the thing is, I forgot his name, but I had seen the show. So I just started saying his catchphrases. I was like, mom, you know the guy, you know, Gabagool. <laughs> my mom just screams to my dad. She goes, Jay, her English is getting worse. <laughs> she goes, they got a bunch of druggies teaching at the school. And my dad's like, they're not druggies, they're educators. She's like, have you seen their pants? Have you seen their pants, Jay? <laughs> you know, I get it, because the whole school was always about, like, building up our confidence. They were like, we want you to be confident about spelling in here, in the real world. So the way they taught us to spell was by clapping out syllables. This is how they taught us. It'd be like, calendar. Okay, do you guys want to try it with me? Pretend you're at work, you're in a cubicle, okay? Now, for whatever reason, you gotta spell the word calendar in an email. 
calendar. All right, does that person next to you look fucking normal to you? <laughs> And the next day after I learned this in school, I went to the DMV with my mom and the woman behind the counter just looked at her and she's like, I told you, you need two forms of ID. <laughs> and I just looked at her and I went, did you go to Churchill? <laughs> hard growing up because I really felt like this dyslexic loser and my older sister was a famous ballerina in the New York City Ballet. <laughs> oh, she's outshining me now, isn't she? <laughs> you know, her posters were all over New York City, you know, just promoting the Nutcracker, Swan Lake, anorexia. It was like... <laughs> The thing is, I never like the ballet. Like, I don't like watching it because, you know, they're up there and they're like, they're so skinny and their head's always looking around in the weirdest way. You know, and they're pointing. Like, to me, it doesn't look like they're dancing. It just looks like they're like searching for food. <laughs> like, oh, there's a crumb and there's a crumb. And they do that one move with their hand, they sweep because they found something on the floor. Ooh, they sweep and they pick it up and just as they're about to eat it, the other ballerina comes in being like, hey, that was my crumb. <laughs> but me and my sister, we're so different. You know, like I'm loud, I'm a stand-up. And my sister, she talks like this, okay? In a very sweet, soft voice, you know? Can't really understand anything she said. <laughs> She speaks in ASMR, my sister. <laughs> I can't even bring my sister to comedy shows because she doesn't laugh. Like when she thinks something is funny, this is what she'll do. Oh my God, I'm dead. <laughs> I am Jewish, I'm from New York. I have a very close relationship with my mom. I always ask her advice about dating and she'll tell me the same thing. So always be like, oh my God, Tori, honey, like what do I know about dating, okay? Listen, I've been married to your father for 30 years. I've only ever slept with two people and the first was your father. I'm like, what? <laughs> and then she'd be like, oh my God, no, no, you know, you know me, you know me, I'm not good at math. I'm like, I think every slut says that, mom. <laughs> but I go for the wrong guys. I always go for these like, you know, really chill guys that live in like deep Bushwick, you know? A little bit of a fuck boy, you know? And like the longest relationship they've ever had is with their MoMA tote bag, you know? <laughs> There's nothing you ever need in that tote bag, ever. It's always like, you know, a pine cone they got from Hudson Valley. <laughs> or I'm like, oh, do you have a condom? He's like, no, but I have this moleskin filled with my haikus. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I don't think I'll be needing that condom anymore. But this one chill guy I dated, we would always watch these like 1950s black and white TV shows. You know where like a guy would use his cigar to punctuate his sentences? It would be like, I gotta say doll face. Paris is beautiful, but not as beautiful as you. <sighs> Hot, sexy, right? Okay, this guy would do the same thing, but with his vape. <laughs> Doesn't really like work the same way, you know? He's like, oh my God, you're amazing. I never met anyone like you. <laughs> Why does it always sound like they're drinking a smoothie and there's a clog in the straw? <laughs> Just like. <laughs> and I swear that vape would make him so dumb. He would just say the dumbest things, but <laughs> crypto, you know what I mean? <laughs> why I was with him. Like, okay, here's the thing. He wasn't even good sexually. He would put his face against my chest like this, okay? Hold one of my boobs like this and the other lick my nipple like. <laughs> Almost felt like I was a safe and he was trying to unlock me. <laughs> Just like, mm, mm, mm. no. <laughs> like, what are you doing? There's nothing in here. I'm at a vape store, you know? <laughs> and I dated this guy for a few months, okay? And then he breaks up with me. And when he broke up with me, he goes, I gotta say though, like, you were a really great experience. <laughs> I'm like, great experience? Am I a semester abroad? Like, what <laughs> are you talking about? And then I 
found out he gave me an STD. Now this STD, I never heard of this one in my life. Okay, it's called Molescum Contagiosum. And when I told my sister this, she said the funniest thing I've ever heard her say. She goes, Tori, it sounds like your vagina got molested by a Harry Potter spell. <laughs> It sounds like something like Voldemort would come up with because he was mad some girl like rejected him at Hogwarts. <laughs> They're lying in bed together and she's like, Voldemort, I like you, I really do. Ugh, you know, I'm just, I'm not ready to shag. And he's like, oh no, no worries, no worries. But like, you know, can I still go down on you? And she's like, yes. And then he goes down on her and he's like, Meles, come, good day to and she's like, ugh, why does it burn? <laughs> but I was so upset that this guy gave me an STD. I was like, you know what? He doesn't deserve a phone call from me. No, no, no. You know, I'm just going to text him, you know? So I texted him being like, hi, I have molescum, but I'm... <laughs> <laughs> But the thing is, I'm dyslexic, so I texted him being like, hi, I have mimosas. <laughs> <laughs> and then he just writes back, sweet, bring some over. It's like, well, according to my doctor, you already have a lot, so. <laughs> but I told myself recently, I was like, you know, Tori, like, put this, like, dyslexic, like, insecure bullshit aside and go for a smart guy. You know, you're smart. So I matched with this guy on Hinge who was really cute. He went to Columbia. He also was, like, so buff, like, <sighs> one of these. But the thing is, the problem with online dating is sometimes someone's voice doesn't match up with how they look. I got to date, he's like this, but then when he spoke, he's like, hi, Tori. <laughs> my, mo my mom tried warning me about this guy. She goes, Tori, I'm telling you, this guy is not gonna be good for you, okay? Did you not read his hinge prompt? Because on his hinge prompt, it read, I get along best with people that aren't afraid to open books. And my mom was like, Tori, did you not see that? Did you not? I'm like, no, I didn't read it, okay? <laughs> But she was right. I get to his apartment. There's books everywhere, okay? My nightmare, okay? <laughs> and then he starts asking me questions. And he's like, oh, like, what's your favorite movie? And, you know, I never want to seem stupid, so I wasn't going to tell him my favorite movie is Coneheads. <laughs> So I was like, all right, Tori, like, think of something, like, smart and artsy. So I was like, oh, girl with the dragon tattoo. <laughs> and then he asked me what my favorite book was, and I was like, girl with the dragon tattoo. <laughs> and then he did this really weird thing sexually. Okay, this is how he went down on me. It was so, this is it, ready? This is how he went down on me. Okay, ready? kissed my belly button, and then came right back up. Very strange, right? Almost like he like booked Mark to eat me out later. <laughs> like, all right, we'll get to that difficult passage in the morning, you know? <laughs> I immediately leave the date. I call my mom. I call my mom, I do. I call her. I'm like, mom, he did this weird thing. And I tell my mom the whole thing, and she just goes, odd boy, odd boy. <laughs> Very odd boy. She goes, you know who used to do that? Like, you know, I'm not gonna name names, you know, but let's just call him your father. <laughs> but I thought about it and I was like, you know what? Like, maybe a friend should set me up on a date. Cause I feel like friends know you the best. So I asked my really good friend, Katie, to set me up on a date. And Katie is Irish. She's one of these very excited Irish girls, like, ooh, you know? <laughs> like, ooh. <laughs> you know, she's very exciting. She's a little naive. Like, if she was to see a homeless person with a beard, she'd be like, oh my God, it's a wizard. Hello. <laughs> now, she sets me up, okay, on a date with this, like, real tough country Irish guy, you know? He's from the country, you know? He's always, like, boxing for no reason, you know? She's like, don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. Put a finger in my ass. Do it, do it, do it, do it. <laughs> now, he proceeds to get wasted on the date. 
I like when guys get wasted on the date because you can find out what they really want to know about you, you know? Like, in the beginning of the date, he asked me when he was sober, he was like, so, uh, you're like growing up in New York. But when he was drunk, the questions completely changed. She was like, you're like being Jewish. <laughs> I mean, he's spilling secrets. He's like, back at home, I, I was a champion. I'm like, oh, what, football? He puts his hands over my mouth and goes, no, River Johnson. <laughs> Leave the date, I call Katie. I'm like, Katie, you set me up with an alcoholic. Oh, no, no, he's a lovely guy. I'm like, where did you even meet him? She's like, at work. I'm like, don't you work at a bar? And she just goes, ooh. <laughs> She goes, and I work the day shift, so this is pretty bad, you know? <laughs> but I was having like a pretty like intimate conversation with Katie, and to preference the story, she's 27. And she tells me, she goes, you know, Tori, I've never really like masturbated before. I'm like, oh my God, Katie, like that's crazy. You gotta do it, it's amazing. You know, I've been doing it since I was three. <laughs> and she just looks at me, she goes, I don't think that's right to you either. <laughs> But I did, I had a little bit of a problem when I was younger. I would go to sleepovers, then I'd get kicked out of the sleepovers. And I was like, I don't understand. Like, you wanna play house? Like, let me show you what the mom does all day. <laughs> and you know, like, I grew up in like a very small New York City apartment, and my room was small, so I'd always sleep in my sister's room. I would do it in my sister's room, okay? But no one ever knew I was doing it in there because no one could ever hear her. She'd just be like, mama! <laughs> like my mom thought the landlord put the heat on, like mama! <laughs> Even as an adult, it's a problem now because I can only ever come in my sister's room. It's a, <laughs> it's a real problem for me. <laughs> I don't know what it is about me. I just feel like I'm prone to like so many problems and issues just occur in my life. Like, okay, a few years ago, I got really sick with Lyme disease. And if you don't know how you get Lyme disease is a tick bites you, sucks a little bit of your blood and then spits out their blood into you. So I have Lyme disease and now the tick has HPV. <laughs> One time I said that a show, a girl in the audience looked at me and went, ew. <laughs> ew. I hate telling people I have Lyme disease because they'll be like, oh my God, you have Lyme disease? My, my dog has Lyme disease. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, oh great, because I'm looking for someone to talk to. Thank you. <laughs> but one time I was making out with this guy and right before we were making out, I started telling him about like all my Lyme disease problems because I don't know. That's how I turn all the guys on, right? I'm like, ooh, I'm such a limey little slut. Ooh, yeah. And then he leaned in, he was like, it's not contagious, is it? And I was like, only for the ones that don't text me back. <laughs> so he has Lyme disease now. <laughs> I was talking to my friend David recently. And he was telling me about this girl he's seeing and how she's dyslexic. Oh, and she's amazing. And I kept going, well, like, what makes her amazing? He goes, I, I, I can't say it, I can't say it. I go, what makes her amazing? I, I can't say it. So then I just go, what, what is she, like, really good at sucking dick? And he goes, yeah, actually, yeah, she is. <laughs> so I thought about it, and I was like, huh, I took that in. And the next day I went to my day job, and I talked to my friend Ben, and I was like, Ben, like, How's everything going with Lisa? And he's like, oh my God, amazing. We're finally putting a down payment on that lake house. I was like, that's great. I was like, she's dyslexic, right? He's like, yeah. I was like, oh, okay. Weird question. <laughs> How is she at sucking dick? And he goes, well, did you not hear me? We're buying a house together. <laughs> so that's two people, okay? Two people. Now listen, I haven't sucked any of your dicks, but if I did, you'd be like, oh, Tori, put yourself on that list, you know? <laughs> so I thought about it, and I was like, you know what? I wish I can go back to that disabled high school I went to, you know? Gather all the girls in the locker room, you know? Be like, girls, come on. Girls, come on, gather around, come on. 
Listen, I know things are really hard right now, okay? I know you can't read, okay? And you have no confidence because of it. Listen, I used to be you, okay? But let me tell you something. In a few years, you're gonna be sucking some real good dick, okay? <laughs> Let's suck, okay? <laughs> All right, dicks, let's suck, okay? Oh, and you, you, Lily Chang, okay, you have ADHD, so you're gonna get distracted in the balls, okay? <laughs> but you, or for number eight, best throat in town, dicks, let's suck, okay, get out there!